Good morning, students. Today's class is on viral gastroenteritis. What is gastroenteritis? It is inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract manifested as diarrhea or vomiting, dysentery, and the like. The previous classes you would have seen about gastroenteritis the cause being multifactorial many factors you would have seen and in today's class it is about the viral causes of gastroenteritis so we'll be seeing about what are the viruses that cause gastroenteritis what are the clinical features how they look the morphology of the virus and the methods of diagnosing them and if at all there is any protection as well the viruses that cause gastroenteritis mainly you have to remember rotavirus and famously the norvoc virus which belongs to the family caliciviridae and the adenovirus astrovirus these four are very important and uh, apart from these which cause gastroenteritis per se there are other viruses like the respiratory viruses many are there which cause uh, clinical syndromes conditions and uh, gastroenteritis is part of that clinical features and now you would all know about coronavirus the sars coronavirus in covid where diarrhea is an uh, not a classical presentation of covid disease this being a part of the disease and influenza is also like that where gastroenteritis diarrhea dysentery uh, form a part of the clinical conditions now let's see about each of these viruses you will be seeing about what are the causes what are the clinical features how to identify them rotavirus it is in latin rota means wheel you can see that this uh, rotavirus under the electron microscope looks like a wheel where the spokes radiate from the central hub okay so rotavirus causes uh, gastroenteritis in young children mainly and adults this happens uh, it it's almost as an epidemic form it can occur as epidemics and also it can be endemic in nature where most diarrheal diseases in children are caused mainly by rotavirus so you can see the electron microscopic picture you can see that it resembles like a wheel it's approximately about 60 to 80 nanometer in size so you need an electron microscope to see it all viruses to visualize it and uh, the important uh, structure of the virus is the important proteins here there are around six structural proteins and six non structural proteins which are important for the virus as well as for us to make the diagnosis now if you look at the structure of rotavirus you can see that the central core with so that is about the structure of the uh, rotavirus where you see the Uh, different uh, proteins the structural proteins and the non structural proteins so the inner capsid layer is seen this is also made of the many uh, structural proteins vp that is denotes the structural protein vp6 and outer capsid is also made of other structural proteins you just need to know that look at the structure that 
appreciate the wheel wheel shaped structure and the segmented double stranded rna genome now the classical symptoms of rotavirus infection is vomiting and almost intractable in nature and diarrhea many episodes are there before it all begins the patient has the stomach ache and runs a high temperature fever is there so classically these four symptoms or any one of it may be there to begin with and diarrhea being a notable notable feature so there is so if you look at the clinical features you should think how the patient will uh, tell the symptom history will be uh, really done with loss loss of lot of fluids and electrolytes in the diarrheal stools and vomiting makes the child especially dehydrated so what how it goes what is the root of infection it's mainly fecal oral route either fomites or uh, not washing the hands properly after visiting the toilet in, in especially in epidemics and all that so there are two clinical features you can group it into group a and group b where diarrhea being you know notable in group a and uh, vomiting in the other and mainly the structural protein 4 nsp4 is acts as a enterotoxin where which attaches to the small intestinal cells the epithelial cells so the clinical feature is that majority of the children recover it happens sometimes in epidemic form in millions of children but some are um, fatally affected they lose their lives because of dehydration which is not being corrected at the right time so in children it can be endemic you will see that is why you have to vaccinate babies because in india it's endemic in nature whereas in china it can occur in epidemic form in adults the rotaviral diarrhea so you can see the pathogenesis how it occurs once the virus enters into the it enters through the stomach i mean through the gi tract and then it colonizes the intestinal epithelial cells the there is virus enters into the intestine through the intestinal lumen into the enterocytes in the epithelium of the intestines so you can see that it is lined the intestinal epithelium is lined the virus goes in and it uh, sheds out the outer layers outer antigenic structures proteins and it multiplies many times inside the enterocytes and it there is a, a lot of shedding of the virus uh, in the stools so there is so, so much of secretion of electrolytes and water and there is fluid loss so lot of electrolyte are is lost so you can look at this picture and see that how the virus enters into the enterocytes clearly and it multiplies and it goes on infecting cell after cell the new cells are infected the virus multiplies and produces toxins that is enterotoxin which is part of the one part of the antigen and uh, this you have to remember so when you do the lab diagnosis you can visualize the virus as in the electron microscope pic picture a left electron microscope pic picture and then if you are going to look out for the antigens of the virus each of these are antigens the rna segments you can see all both the structural proteins and the non structural proteins on the right side in the structure uh, diagram c this can be done through pcr you can detect these proteins this is the picture of a child affected has been totally dehydrated you can see the skin tug this lost its elasticity so after 
holding out the skin if the skin is pinched up it's not going back to its original shape which is a classic picture of dehydration in young children babies so other you have to look out for the other features of dehydration loss of elasticity of the skin and look at the tongue which is dehydrated sunken eyeballs and all the other features you have to look at the history will be given usually by the mother you can say the child has been uh, losing having lot of diarrheal episodes and look out for dehydration which is very important if left uncorrected it can be fatal for the child so which is very important for vaccinating children rotaviral vaccines there are two main types here one is rotavac or rotarix and just telling you to be familiar with the names and uh, these are live attenuated vaccines okay so rotavac it is made of g9 p10 that viral proteins and you have to give it in 6 weeks after 10 weeks and 14 weeks and uh, the other one rotarix it is given at 6 weeks and the next dose is given after 4 weeks in babies so this virus can this vaccine can protect a bit more against the children getting rotavirus so at least about 55% of pro uh, protection this vaccine gives for children under 2 years oral vaccines are also there and injectable ones also so uh, the oral vaccine what happens it multiplies and re tries to replace the wild virus the next virus is belongs to the family calici viride norwalk virus and sapo virus norwalk virus is uh, you can see that the calici viride is so called because it shows a cup shaped calyx depression is there in the surface of the viral structure so that is why it is called as calici viride and it's got a the genome is a single structure dna structure is single and it is approximately around 20 nanometers size 20 to 40 nanometers size you can remember the structure of the norwalk uh, virus how does what is the route of infection mainly by contaminated food like you can see in the picture as shellfish oysters and uh, uncooked uh, pro not properly cooked by the virus can live and salads lot with made with lettuce leaves or broccoli or any other uncooked food may be if it is contaminated by the virus it can cause the diseases and fresh fruits also so this can start an, an almost an epidemic next is adenovirus this types 40 and 41 are commonly known to affect older children and also infants it's not confined to one particular geographical location all over the world this can cause disease and astrovirus astro the name is uh, means star this is a star shaped virus and there are around seven zero types in it this apart from affecting children and uh, young babies it also is known to affect elderly people the geriatric group also astrovirus is commonly known to cause diarrhea so the lab diagnosis of these uh, viruses is uh, if you to visualize it it's the electron microscopic picture either the scanning electron microscopy or transmission when you want to see the internal structures it's mainly for uh, visualizing initially where you see for example the rotavirus in the electron microscopic picture is seen as a v and in serological tests you have enzyme linked immunosorbent assay is mainly commonly used for diagnosing rotaviral diarrhea in children elisa tests 
you know how it is done the routinely if the uh, viral antibodies are coated on the elisa wells and then you add the stool samples a small bit of fit the diarrheal stool and development of color shows it is positive and it is read with a spectrophotometer so the while collection of the stool sample also this has to be collected in sterile containers and has to be transported to a, a viral reference center for diagnosing these diarrhea rapid cut tests are also there and polymerase chain reactions also the norm to diagnose these viral diseases but a high degree of clinical suspicion is also important for diagnosing viral diarrhea in children or in adults thank you